Hey everyone, Joe at Small Home Off Grid Prepping. So today I'm going to be talking about solar and I'm going to explain to you how solar works. Uh, it's a very, very simple process. I'm going to show you how you can actually build your own DIY solar generator for literally a fraction of the cost, what it would cost if you just went out and bought a solar generator and then put the panels on. And solar is very, very simple, okay? This here, I'm sure everybody watching this knows, this is a battery charger, right? Um, this charges batteries like this battery that you have over here, okay? This puts out, it's actually 14 volts, but this is a 12 volt battery, so this has a charge regulator in it, and it will not allow overcharging. When the battery is fully charged, it will actually shut this down, and it's, you know, fully charged battery. So solar works the same way, okay? Solar panel is a battery charger, and this is an old panel that I've used for about 10 years. This is one of my new ones over here. I actually have eight of these, and this is a 100 watt panel over here, and this is actually an old charge controller that I used over here, um, this is an 8 amp charge controller. It's way too small for what I'm doing here. But again, this is something I used when we were building the property and we were living completely off grid. Um, if you remember my other videos, I've explained to you guys how you figure out wattage based on voltage and based on amperage. Okay, so that is an 8 amp charger. This is a 12 volt battery. So if you multiply voltage by amperage, that is where you get the wattage. So if you take a 12 volt battery, you take 12 volts, you multiply it by 8 amps, that is 96. So that charger is good for 96 watts. It's basically a 100 watt charger is what that is. Okay, so this is my uh, main charge controller that I'll be using here when I connect my um, solar setup over here. This one here is a 100 amp charger. Um, if you do 12 times 100, that's a 1200 watt charger. Okay, so as you see here, I'm checking the voltage coming directly out of the panel. This is my smaller panel right here, but the other one is the same thing. Um, it is currently putting out 20.16 volts, okay? 20 volts is too much to charge a 12 volt battery with. You can't do that. So you have to use what's called a charge controller. And what the charge controller will do, if you see here right now, it's monitoring my battery voltage, which is 12.5. If I hit this button over here, even though I don't have a panel connected into it, this pin, this is reading 14.2, okay? So this will allow 14.2 volts. So it will take my panel, which is putting out slightly over 20 volts, it will reduce that down to 14 volts, so I'm not char overcharging this battery over here, okay? Um, I'm gonna be doing charge controllers. This is not a super expensive one. Um, it's a good one, I'm real happy with it. They make a lot of different ones, so I'm gonna be doing another video on charge controllers. Um, this one works great for me. It might not be what you guys want, so I will get into explaining the differences and um, you know help you figure out which one you guys want, basically. They do make them super expensive. This one was, I think, less than $100. Wasn't that big a deal? Um, but again, what this is basically doing is this is reducing the voltage that's going into the battery, and then at the same time, when the battery becomes fully charged, it will actually cut the voltage so you're not overcharging your batteries, okay? And like I said, I'm going to be doing a video on charge controllers, so if you guys want to see that, it'll be coming out. Um, subscribe, hit the notification button, and you guys will see when that video comes out. Okay, so yeah, like I said, your panels are gonna charge the battery. They go through the charge controller. They do make some charge controllers that will hook up directly to an inverter, okay? And I'll explain what an inverter is in a minute. Um, this particular one here that I'm using, it's a simple 12 volt. Um, it basically has to run off of the battery, okay? So the charge controller will regulate the voltage going into the battery, and then I still have to take the battery, which is DC current, okay? Batteries put out DC current. In your house, you have what's called AC current. All right. Now, what DC current is is DC current is direct current, which means the electricity as it runs through the wire is just going straight through the wire. Okay, it's not fluctuating, it's not doing anything. That is called a direct current. Um, think about plumbing going through the pipe. Okay, the plumbing, if you turn your faucet on, it just comes steady, nice and straight, right? AC current, which is what's in your house, is what's called alternating current. Okay, instead of going straight through, it literally alternates back and forth. Okay, it doesn't just go like this, it'll go back and forth as it travels forward. So we have to take what's in your house will not run on these batteries. You have a battery bank, you have solar that's charging them, but you, um, you, you basically can't take that and run your refrigerator, run your TV, run things in your house. So now you have to convert the power from your battery, which is direct current, into alternating current. And let me show you how we do that. So this is just an old one I used. When we were building the house, we actually, for a long time, were completely off-grid living here. We're strictly on solar. Um, I didn't need a lot of power. So this is just a 750 watt, and this is not good. This is a great inverter for TVs, um, lights in the house, stuff like that. But this is what's called a modified um, 
modified sign and you want to use what's called a pure sign okay if you're going to run any appliances like an air conditioner and all that and the simplest way to explain this to you is as an electrician when we talk about these things we basically refer to what's called clean power these do not put out exact clean power okay and i'm not going to kind of get into detail i will be doing again um i'll do a video on charge controllers because you could get a little complicated on those same thing with the inverters okay eventually i'm going to do a video on the inverters and explain to you for what i need in my house this is called a single phase inverter works perfect again for tv lights everything i need it will not work on my air conditioner okay my air conditioner runs on 240 volts and this only puts out 120 volts at 750 watts okay i need what's called a split phase a split phase because my air conditioner runs on 240 volts a split phase will put out 240 volts okay so it'll run my ac it'll run the lights it'll run everything like that so this is a great inverter but i would not use this for my refrigerator because again this is what's called a modified not a pure um, sign and a pure sign is going to put out a cleaner power less fluctuations it's less damaging to the motors okay this one over here could basically fluctuate and it could cause damage to motors so you don't want to use a modified again i'm going to do a video on this explaining because there's a lot of power inverters i'm just trying to show you guys the basics today how solar works it's very 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 simple okay so um if you want to see again subscribe hit the notification button and you guys will see when the video comes out on the power inverter same thing with the charge controller Okay, so like I said, um, in my case, I have five of these batteries over here. I have eight of those panels, so that's going to be the setup that I have. And again, I'll be doing a video on that. I'm getting closer. I'm actually waiting for my split phase inverter to come in, which is 240. So right now I'm showing you this. If I were to lose power today, I'm perfectly fine with everything I have. I can run my lights. I can run my TV. Um, it's a little cooler. I don't have to really worry about my AC right now. But again, this will not run my AC. If I really wanted to, this is all a setup enough that I could run my refrigerator. So really all this won't run is my... My, um, AC unit but again this is a modified so I would not want to run my refrigerator on this because I could damage the compressor and damage the motor um, so basically you now have your battery pack okay so you now have to take DC current and you have to change it into AC current so as you see here it's very simple what happens is this wire is the negative connects to the negative on there this wire is the positive connects to the positive on there okay and now we just turn this on just like that over there and you see we now have plugs we now have power so let's just take i don't have a lot of corded things these days most everything i have is cordless but this is an old jigsaw that i have and you see i plug this jigsaw in okay and let's not cut our cord uh, plug the jigsaw in and you see it's telling me the wattage that i'm using okay so now what i've done is i've taken the battery with dc current i've run it through my power inverter and i now have ac current Okay, and when I hook up this to my house, if you guys have seen my generator video, um, you know that I put in the interlock kit and I put in what's called a generator inlet, okay? That is so you can take a generator and you can plug it into your home and you can power your entire home just like the power company would be. Well, when it comes to my solar, I'm going to use the same exact setup. Um, I'll be doing a video on that, so if you guys subscribe, hit the notification, you'll see when all these videos, you know, are coming out over here. But basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to connect my eight panels. I am going to run them through my charge controller over here. I'm going to charge my batteries. Then I'm going to connect my split phase power inverter when I come in, which will put out 240 volts. My split phase inverter is going to have a plug just like the generator. That the cord I plug into the generator will be the same thing. It will plug into my solar. Then it plugs into my panel and I use the interlock kit. And if you guys, again, haven't seen this, um, just click the thumbnail at the end of this video here and the generator video will start. Uh, you see we've generated AC power. This is a jigsaw just like you plug into a house over here. And it's running through the inverter. So the battery puts out DC voltage. I've connected my inverter to it and it now puts out AC voltage. And guys, this is literally how simple solar is, okay? Um, there, you're going to be doing a bigger house. Um, I'm going to, again... I'm wiring these in what's called parallel, okay? I have five batteries, which means I'm wiring them in parallel, okay? Parallel means they will remain 12 volts. I could wire these in series for 24 volts, 36 volts, 48 volts. Um, in my case, I don't need to do that, okay? In your case, you guys might need to go a little bit bigger if you have a bigger AC unit. Um, again, if you remember the videos, I've some of the videos I've done in the past, I built a super, super, super high efficiency home here. My air conditioner by itself literally takes less than what 300 watt light bulbs do, okay? Um, so I don't need a lot. I'm good with 12 volts. But in this case, like I said, I have five batteries. I have eight panels, and that is more than enough power, okay? And I'll show you guys something a little cool here. This is not perpetual motion, but as you see here, I'm going to now take this battery charger. I'm going to plug this battery charger into my inverter, right? 
And I'm going to take this battery charger and I'm going to connect it to this battery over here, just like this over here. Okay, and now you see I'm actually using the battery running through the inverter, plugging in my battery charger, and I'm now charging the battery. And no, that's not perpetual motion, okay? This would not last forever like this here. I'm taking the current from here and putting it into my battery charger and putting it back into my battery right now. So I have a circle going on right now, but that is how solar works. It's super, super, super simple. There's not a lot to it. So, um, like I said, I'm going to be getting a little bit more into detail about these different things because, like I said, there is different kind of charge controllers. There is different power inverters. You have single phase. You have split phase. But I just want to do um, kind of just show you guys how simple solar is, okay? If you want to build your own DIY solar generator, it's super, super simple. Buy the panels. Get your batteries. Get your charge controller. Get a power inverter and connect all these things together. And guess what? You now have the sun charging a panel, okay? A battery charger has to plug in. This works completely different, okay? This has what's called photovoltaic cells inside of it. When the sun hits this panel, it generates that into electricity. And the electricity, as I showed you earlier, um, in this case was coming out at 20 volts. You take that 20 volts, reduce it with your charge controller over here, and um, it charges your battery, and your battery is fully charged. It cuts off. So the trick to solar is, um, and again, I have the solar calculators. You're going to want to know if you're doing this. I want to run my refrigerator. If I'm out for a week without power, I want to run my refrigerator. Um, I want my TV. I want my lights. I want my AC. Well, you have to balance yourself out to where you can run all that during the day when it's charging and the sun is out. But at nighttime, you don't have sun, so none of this is charging. So now you need your battery backup to be strong enough that you can still run the refrigerator at night when there's no sun. You can run your power. You can run all that. So there is... Um, calculations you can do load calculations and again I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this here I wanted to just show you guys the basics of what this is today and how simple solar is um, I am going to be doing more videos so subscribe hit the notification button and you can see how do you do the load calculations to know that you have the right amount of panels for the right amount of uh, you know batteries to run everything that's in your house that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I'm going to be doing multiple videos on this one um, again subscribe hit the notification buttons and you will see all the different videos that are going to be coming out I am going to put this on um, my panels up on the roof of the shed and connect everything to my house and all that so there's going to be a lot more on this here but um, that basically is it I just wanted to show you the basics of how solar works again solar panel charges the battery has to go through a charge controller so everything is regulated so you're not overcharging and the voltage is regulated down once the batteries are fully charged battery connects to what's called a power inverter power inverter takes direct current DC current and turns it back into AC current and um, once it turns back into AC current that's what's in your house AC current. So you run refrigerators, you run air conditioners, you run whatever. Again, in my case, um, this is a single phase, only puts out 120. The only thing in my house I need to run on 240 is my air conditioner. That's it. So everything else um, will run in my house. Lights, TV, there's nothing. I can run my microwave. I can run everything on this over here. But again, I have to put in what's called a split phase inverter for mine. So like I said, guys, subscribe, hit the notification buttons. I'm going to be doing a lot more on this here, so you're going to see it. Um, have a great day, guys.